friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural and nutritional roads to your vitality and to your health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side to help clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 27 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis and eczema and rosacea and acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human body biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may think that's a miracle, this healing, renewing, regenerating system is really just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you on the bright side. Our number is 855-660-4261. That's 855-660-4261. If you have questions about ingredients, prescriptions, nutritional supplements, health conditions, health challenges, 855-660-4261 is your number, and we love hearing from you. Success stories, same thing. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 855-660-4261. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear us talk about on the Bright Side, you can head over to brightsideben.com, take a look at our shopping cart with all the longevity products, and you can also hit the Join the Team link. If you want to start a longevity business for a one-time $10 fee, you can make some money selling longevity products, make some money spreading the word about the importance of nutritional supplementation, and of course, you can enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business. You can also call Call the Brightside Bend phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. All right, welcome once again to the Bright Side. We're talking about bone building. We're talking about building in general. We're talking about fat absorption, vitamin D, and vitamin D absorption. If you have a problem with fat malabsorption, and millions of Americans do, according to Wikipedia, nearly 30% of Americans have fat malabsorption issues. That's 100 million people. Seriously significant. If you have a problem this way, you are going to have a problem absorbing vitamin D from foods and absorbing vitamin D from supplements as well. You're going to have a problem absorbing all your fatty vitamins, vitamins D, E, A, and K. You're going to have a problem absorbing nutrients from plants, phytonutrients from plants that tend to be fatty. You're going to have a lot of problems if you're dealing with fat malabsorption, and that's a lot of folks. The liver is a key player in fat absorption, maybe the key player in fat absorption, and tens of millions of Americans or more are addressing fatty liver disease too, which gets worse as we get older. Throw in gallbladder removal or gallbladder disease, throw in intestinal disease, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, a large amount of fat absorption occurs in the intestine. Throw in all of these factors and you are looking at serious, serious problems with fat malabsorption. And the main point here, folks, is because digestion and absorption and, and processing of these fatty nutrients is so darn important. You just can't pop a vitamin A pill or a vitamin D pill or a vitamin E pill or a calcium supplement or a selenium supplement or essential fatty acids and expect to get the benefits. These things have to be absorbed into the body from the digestive tract. And if you're dealing with fat malabsorption problems, gallbladder problems, liver problems, intestinal problems, you could be making matters worse for yourself than if you didn't take the nutrients at all. This is why periodically you'll hear, uh, hear these studies that come out in the news about how calcium supplements may be problematic. It's not the calcium supplements. It's the malabsorption of the calcium supplements. These supplements that we're talking about, whether we're dealing with vitamin D or vitamin A or vitamin E or calcium or selenium, these are powerful chemicals, folks. 
And it's not just a question of taking them. It's a question of absorbing them in the world of nutrition. We say it's not what you take, it's what you absorb. For women who are approaching menopause or perimenopause or have had a hysterectomy, malabsorption of fats is especially likely. And this is a, an important and underappreciated relationship between estrogen and, and female hormones and fat absorption. As estrogen levels drop, for example, one of the more likely and unfortunately poorly addressed health issues is a compromise in the ability to handle fats. And this is really a big problem because these fatty substances that postmenopausal or perimenopausal women are not going to be able to absorb or are going to have a compromised ability to absorb, these fatty substances have a special role to play in the chemistry of female hormones. So you get this vicious downward spiral where uh, uh, lower levels of female hormones result in poor absorption of phytonutrients and fatty nutrients, which results in uh, more defects in female hormones, which results in more defects in absorbing fatty nutrients nutrients and you get this downward vicious spiral that we see so often in the world of biology and the world of nutrition. And by the way, phytonutrients, phytoestrogens specifically, these plant compounds that can act like hormones, that can support the hormone system, those aren't going to be absorbed either. Phytoestrogens are associated with reductions in obesity. Phytoestrogens are associated with improvements in blood sugar. So if you're not absorbing your phytonutrients, your plant nutrients, you're going to be running higher risks for obesity, higher risk for, for diabetes, higher risk for skin problems because these phytonutrients and phytoestrogens are also protective against the sun. All of this is to say, folks, that utilization and absorption of fatty nutrients and fat absorption chemistry is super, super relevant, super, super important when it comes to understanding our health in general and bone building health specifically. So first of all, when it comes to addressing the fatty compartment of the body, fatty nutrients, fat absorption, we want to determine whether our health issue has a fatty component that needs to be addressed. In the case of osteoporosis, vitamin D, vitamin A, calcium, all of these function in the fatty compartment of the body. To get an understanding of the relatively complicated nature of fat utilization compared to watery substances, think about washing dishes. When you're cleaning your dishes, you got two kinds of grime, two kinds of food matter that you need to take care of. Think about silverware and plates with peanut butter and jelly on them. Peanut butter and jelly are a rough approximation of fatty substances and watery substances. Peanut butter being oil, we say lipophilic. Lipophilic means fat-loving. And jelly being watery, we say hydrophilic. Hydro means water hydrophilic water loving so peanut butter and uh, peanut butter and jelly and your silverware are a rough approximation of fat material or fatty substances and watery substances in food in your dishes the jelly pretty much rinses right off the peanut butter that doesn't rinse right off the peanut butter is actually repellent to water Remember, oil and water don't mix. So how do you get the peanut butter off effectively? Well, you got to pre-mix it with some kind of substance that is attracted to its fatty nature so it can pre-mix with the peanut butter and at the same time also combine with water from your tap. In other words, you have to mix the peanut butter with some kind of substance that has a fatty side to it and a watery side to it that has a fatty nature to it and a watery nature to it. You know what we call that substance that we mix the peanut butter with that has a fatty substance and a, a fatty nature and a watery nature to it? We call it soap. We call it dishwashing soap. That's what dishwashing soap is. That's what any soap is. Any soap is a chemical or a molecule that has a fatty side to it and a watery watery side to it. The fatty side attaches to the grime or the peanut butter and the watery side attaches to the water from the tap. And you pre-mix the grime with this, with this soapy material that has a watery nature and a fatty nature. And what happens when it combines with the water? It rinses right off. That's how soap works. A soap is, by chemical definition, literally, a soap is, by definition, a substance that has a fatty nature and a watery nature. Technically, a soap is called an emulsifying agent. You probably have heard this term, emulsifying agents. Emulsifying agents are nothing more than chemicals that have a fatty nature to them and a watery nature to them, and it allows them to combine with fats in foods, in the case of soap, or in dirt, in the case of soap, uh, uh, shower gels or shower soaps, 
and then a watery side that combines with water that's coming out of the tap. Technically, we call that an emulsifying agent because an emulsion is a combination of water and oil. Why does this have a, a, an important relevance when it comes to health? Hang tight. We'll talk about that. Side, 855-660-4261 is our number, and we do have a couple lines open for you. You guys don't wait to the last minute. I try to get as many calls in as I can, and I want to spend as much time as I need to with, with all our calls, so please try to call in earlier. Uh, don't wait to the last segment. 855-660-4261 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, and take a look at our shopping cart. With all the longevity products, you can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. And, of course, you can always ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team and starting a longevity business, making some money selling longevity products, and enjoying all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Okay, we're talking about fat malabsorption. Very underappreciated health issue. It doesn't matter what you're taking. It matters what you're absorbing. And because we've been emphasizing fatty nutrients so much here on this program, I thought it would be important. I thought it would be relevant to talk a little bit about how the body absorbs fats. Think peanut butter and jelly, jelly being watery, peanut butter being fatty. That's a rough approximation of the fatty components of food and the watery components of food. Jelly, no problem processing off your silverware, off your dishes. Peanut butter, a little bit different. In order to get that peanut butter off, you've got to pre-mix it with something that's got a fatty side that will stick to the peanut butter and a watery side that will attract water. And the combination of the uh, uh, of the water and the and this material that sticks to the peanut butter and the peanut butter can rinse right off. We call that that magical substance, if you will, that's got a watery side and a fatty side to it. We call it a soap. Or, more technically, we call it an emulsifying agent because an emulsion is a combination of water and oil. So if you're going to be able to process, i.e. wash, your peanut butter off your silverware and plates, you're going to have to emulsify it. Are you guys seeing where I'm going with this? Our peanut butter represents our fatty nutrients, our vitamins, our vitamin D, E, A, K, our minerals, selenium, calcium, and essential fatty acids. And don't forget about vitamin D, which we're talking about today. Vitamin D is super, mega, mega important, but you can't just take vitamin D if you're not absorbing it. Do you know one of the side effects of vitamin D deficiency is muscle pain and muscle weakness? How many of you guys out there are dealing with chronic muscle pain and muscle weakness? And you think it's fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome. You may even think it's a, a joint problem like arthritis. And it may just be muscle weakness or fatigue or joint weakness and fatigue caused by vitamin Vitamin D deficiency, secondary to problems absorbing fatty nutrients. So what exactly are biological or food emulsifying agents? What exactly is the body's soap, if you will? Well, you only have to listen to the bright side once or twice to know about what I consider to be one of the most important fluids in the body next to blood. And it's the body's soap, the body's emulsifying agent, the body's dishwashing soap, if you will. Of course, I'm talking about bile, B-I-L-E, bile, perhaps the most uh, underappreciated of all the body substances, certainly one of the most underappreciated of all the body substances. The bile system is the body's detergent system. And folks, it is the key player in helping the body wash or helping the body release fatty nutrients from foods as well as helping the body get those fatty nutrients into the liver, which is the primary organ of fat metabolism. In fact, while the stomach and the intestine, the pancreas, these are all very important structures when it comes to helping the body exploit, take advantage of fatty nutrients, none of these structures can hold a candle to bile and the liver, and for that matter, the gallbladder, when it comes to processing fatty nutrients. And keep in mind here, we're talking about bone health. We're talking about the health of the bone. If you listen to the zillions of healthcare shows out there, you listen to Dr. Oz type mainstream medicine, or even, unfortunately, many alternative healthcare practitioners and naturopaths talk about bone health, you're definitely going to be hearing about calcium. You may even be hearing about vitamin D. You may hear about magnesium, but rarely will you 
ever hear anyone telling you about the key role of your gallbladder? That's right, your gallbladder is critically important for making sure your bones are strong. The liver, same thing. Bile, same thing. All of these are very important for helping the body leverage bone building nutrition. If you don't have a gallbladder, if you suspect fat malabsorption, if you've got liver problems, fatty liver disease, if you've had a hysterectomy, if you're menopausal or perimenopausal, there's a really good chance that you're dealing with fat malabsorption. If you feel discomfort or pain after, fat, uh, after you've had fatty meals, if you have a history of gallstones, if you have any kind of intestinal disease, IBS, Crohn's disease, if you have a hepatitis, pancreatic health issues, including diabetes, you would be well advised to support fat absorption from the digestive system and there's a lot of ways to do it. You can blend your fatty foods, grind up your, your uh, fatty foods in a, in a Vitamix or in a food processor. That will help release some of the oils, some of the fatty substances. And keep in mind here, folks, vegetables count as fatty foods, at least for this discussion. Broccoli and cucumber count as fatty foods, even though they may not look that way. The phytonutrients, the plant nutrients, the phytoestrogens are located in the fatty compartment of the broccoli. And there is a fatty compartment in the broccoli and even in the celery and even in the lettuce for that matter. So grinding these things up in a food processor can help release some of the fatty substances. Mixing a little bit of oil in the food processor as you're grinding up these fatty foods, that can also help. If you heat your uh, veggies, roast them or steam them very, very slightly, not too much because you don't want to cause any damage to the nutrients. So very slightly heating your, your uh, vegetables in coconut oil in butter or in a little bit of olive oil can also help release some of those nutrients. Mix up uh, your, uh, make sure you're taking your bile salts and your digestive enzymes with your fatty meals. Make sure your digestive enzymes contain something called lipase, L-I-P-A-S-E. If you use the ultimate enzymes, you'll get lipase and you'll get bile salts. Use lecithin after, meal, after meals. Lecithin is a classic example of an emulsifying agent. This is one of the reasons why lecithin is such powerful medicine. Lecithin is like a soap. Lecithin has got a watery side to it and a fatty side to it. It is a classic emulsifying agent. I use lecithin in skincare products. And by the way, emulsifying agents are used a lot in skincare products because Skincare products, creams and lotions, that is, are typically emulsions. They're typically made with an oil portion and a fatty por uh, a oil portion and a watery portion. And these two things are blended together with an emulsifying agent. Lecithin makes a great emulsifying agent for skincare products. Lecithin makes a great emulsifying agent for food. In fact, bile itself, the body's most important emulsifying agent, gets its emulsification properties largely because it's made of lecithin. Sulfur has got some emulsification properties. Using a gram of MSM every day can be helpful. So if you're taking vitamin D, you're taking vitamin D supplements, make sure you take them with fatty foods. Make sure you take your vitamin D supplements with fat absorption aids as well. And all that being said, food sources are not the best way to get your vitamin D. Supplements are not the best ways to get your not the best way to get your vitamin D. The best way to get your vitamin D, and most of the vitamin D that's found in the body, comes from the sun. Our skin is capable of making vitamin D when it's in the sun. And this solar activation of, 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 a, of a chemical, I'll tell you what that chemical is on our next program, this solar activation of this chemical and uh, its ability to turn into vitamin D, in my opinion, is one of the most astounding aspects of all of biology. It means, folks, we're solar activated beings. There's aspects of our chemistry that are essential for our health and for our lives that are the products of sunlight activation. We are solar activated entities. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll on the bright side. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about how the body actually makes vitamin D. It's really, really cool how this whole thing happens. Most of the vitamin D in our blood comes from uh, this chemical reaction that occurs between the sun and a very interesting molecule that's in the skin. Some of you guys know what that is. We'll tell you what it is tomorrow. 
uh, as we continue talking about vitamin D and bone building. By the way, for ladies out there, if you're interested in getting some phytoestrogens, phytoestrogens, plant estrogens can help you skate through menopause a little bit more effectively, a little bit with a little bit more ease. Phytoestrogens, plant-based estrogens can have important benefits for the digestive system. They can have important benefits for weight loss. They can have important benefits for blood sugar control. These phytoestrogens are found in seeds, largely uh, uh, seeds and nuts and grains to a certain extent. Soy is the most commonly recognized source of phytoestrogens. You can actually get two phytoestrogens uh, that are uh, found in soy called genistin and diazidin, G-E-N-I-S-T-E-N, genistin and diazidin, and that's D-A-I-D-Z-E, D-A-I-D-Z-E-I-N, diazidin, that's kind of hard to say. You can get these things as supplements, and they're marketed as bone-building supplements, and largely because of their phytoestrogenic properties. These phytoestrogens also can help the body process and build bone. Flax seeds are my favorite way to get phytoestrogens, and men benefit from phytoestrogens just as much as women do, by the way. Uh, Flax seeds are my favorite way to get phytoestrogens because if you uh, grind up your flax seeds and put them in your smoothie, not only will you get the phytoestrogens, but you'll also get the fiber, and flaxseed fiber also is a good source of protein and fatty vitamins like vitamin E, especially like vitamin E. All right, let's see. Anything else I want to tell you about vitamin D? I think we'll hold off on that tomorrow. We'll talk about the sun and vitamin D. And why you don't want to wear sunscreen? You know, sunscreens block out the sun, of course. They block out UVB, but they also block out the body's ability to make vitamin D. Most of the vitamin D, the vitamin D that's in the blood comes from the sun, and it comes from the burning ray. The sun is made up of three rays. Sun energy is made up of three rays. We call them UVA rays or UVB rays or UVC rays. And these three different rays all have different frequencies or different what they call wavelengths, different speeds. You can think of them as being faster or slower. Your uh, UVC ray is the fastest. Your UVA ray is the slowest. And your UVB ray, the one right in the middle, that's the ray that causes burning. And that's the ray that makes the vitamin D. So if you're wearing a sunscreen or you're wearing a sunblock, you're not going to be getting that UVB. And you're not going to be making vitamin D. And by the way, the same thing is true about folks who have a lot of pigment, especially black folks who have lots of melanin. African Americans are well known for having lower levels of vitamin D and higher levels, higher rates of vitamin D deficiency health issues, including hypertension and prostate disease and colon disease and breast disease. All of these are vitamin D deficiency related conditions. And because African Americans have so much melanin in their skin, they are at high risk for vitamin D deficiency. So if you're African American, you may especially want to make sure that you're uh, correcting any fat malabsorption issues and that you're supplementing with vitamin D and eating vitamin D-containing foods. We'll talk about all this tomorrow as we continue talking about bone building, bone building nutrition, fat absorption, and vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. Our number today, 855-660-4261. Got a line open for you. Love to hear from you. Let's take our first phone call of the day. Pat in Texas, welcome to the bright side. Hi, Ben. Um, yes, I had called a couple of days ago, and you told me to call back. My husband has a nerve pain in his hands, and um, also need to let you know he has neurofibromatosis. I hate it when you say that. He doesn't have neurofibromatosis. He's just got inflammation in his body. These are just die. I'm teasing you a little bit here, Pat. The doctors love naming these stupid things, giving you these dumb Latin terms to try and tell you what's going on. So he doesn't have neurofibromatosis like you have a child or you have a house or you have a car. When you say you have something, that's like a possession of yours. He doesn't have a, a process. Neurofibromatosis simply means he's, he's got fibers in his nerves. His nerve cells are probably pumping out fibers. His nerve cells are going nuts. That's what's happening. Neurons okay. or nerve cells are going crazy. That's basically what it is. You understand what I'm saying? Well, you don't want to say, I have this, because it sounds like it's your possession. It sounds like you own it now. It's not your right. possession. This is just something that's happening in his body. 
He doesn't okay. have. Uh, uh, he doesn't have. Uh, uh, well, I'm not going to go there. Point is, when we have a dysfunction in the body, when we have a pathology in the body, when we're experiencing symptomology in the body, it is nothing more than cells going crazy. Period. The only question we got to ask is why are cells going crazy? Nerve pain is a classic sign of inflammation, and not necessarily big inflammation, macro inflammation. I'm talking about micro inflammation. I know I say this a lot, but for the new listeners out there, there's two kinds of inflammation that occur in the body. One is the kind of inflammation that you get when you break your leg or sprain your ankle or get punched in the eye or whatever, get hit with a baseball. That's macro inflammation. That's swelling, and you can obviously see that. But there's also the same kind of inflammation that occurs at the microscopic level of a cell. And when that occurs, cells begin to go crazy. They don't get the food they need. They can't eliminate the wastes that they're producing. They can't get oxygen. They suffocate. I call it suffocation, starvation, toxification. It's a result of inflammation, and what's worse is microinflammation, that, that is. And what's worse is it's, it spirals. It, it's a vicious circle. So once you have that inflammation, you get more starvation, toxification, and suffocation, which leads to more inflammation, which leads to more suffocation, toxification, and, inflama- and uh, starvation, et cetera. You, you, does that make sense, Pat? You see where I'm going right. with this thing? Okay. Right. Okay, so what we want to do, if we want to break this spiral, break this circle, is we want to figure out what is getting into the body that's causing or uh, getting into the body is causing these cells to become inflamed. And inflammation is like a beaver's dam. You know, you ever see a beaver's dam, how there's all kinds of sticks and muck and it all kind of plugs up the water and you get this kind of pool of water being surrounded by a barricade that we call a dam? You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, the same thing is happening at a microscopic level, except the the beaver's dam that is the microinflammation of the body is not made up of logs and bricks. It's made up of fibers. This is where that word fiber comes from. And What did you call it? Neurofiber? Neurofiber? Just tell me again. Neurofibromentosis, all right? It's just fibers in the nerves, basically, is what you're talking about. And so these these fibers in the nerves are causing a suffocation and starvation and a toxification of the nerve cells. And the nerve cells respond to that by becoming super sensitized, and that's the pain. Now, all that is just theory about what's happening in the body. What you want to do is say, how can we we resolve this? The way you resolve any kind of inflammatory issue, and all disease has an inflammatory component, a microinflammatory component, the way you resolve this thing is you figure out what is getting into the body that's triggering this microinflammation. Now, microinflammation has a synonym, has another word that describes it, and that's called immunity. Microinflammation is the sign of an immune response. Are you with me so far? Because I'm, I'm trying to lead you yes. here a little bit. Yes. Okay. So microinflammation is a sign of an immune response. What's an immune response? An immune response is a defensive response. The immune system is the defense system. So microinflammation means something has gotten into the body that's triggering the body's defense system. Okay? Hang tight because I'm going to finish this when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got a line for, open for you at 855-660-4261 if you want to get on board. We'll be back right after this. All right, Pat from Texas. Are you there, ma'am? Yes. Okay, so it turns out neuro, I did a little research here. Neurofibromatosis is tumor cells growing in the nerves, but it's the same idea. Okay. Cells going crazy, okay? It's just it's cells dividing out of control, cells doing what they shouldn't be doing. Why do cells do what they shouldn't be doing? Listen, you've got 100 trillion cells, Pat, and for the most part, they're working perfectly. For most of our lives, they work perfectly. But when we get, uh, when we get older, when our body starts to break down, they don't work so perfectly, and there's only one thing we need to ask when our cells aren't working perfectly and all diseases cell disease. So it's basically anything going wrong with our body. There's only one thing we need to ask. What is getting into the body that is activating this immunity and inflammatory response that's causing the cell dysfunction? The immune system is the defense system. It's a sign of a defensive response. Now, I don't know your husband, right? Never talked to you before. How old is he, by the way? He's 43. Okay. He's very young to be having this, by the way. So I can tell you with great definity, I can tell you with 100% surety, this man has had long-standing digestive health issues, okay? And I can tell you that because he's too young to be having this kind of breakdown. When you have this kind of breakdown at an early age, it means the body has been attacked for many years, probably decades, probably since he was a kid. 
Is this ringing a bell at all, ma'am? Oh, yeah. Well, he's had the uh, neurofibromatosis all his life. It's just that the, the hands The food allergies, the food... Him. The food allergies, the digestive breakdown, the, the cramping, the bloating. Has he had that all his life? Or do you know? Um... He did, yeah, he has, he's had problems with food all of his life, yeah. Okay. Now, Pat, do you see how I, I did this here? It, it's not right. like I, I'm psychic. I'm telling you this because this is how the body breaks down. And, and it's, I'm making myself irrelevant because you don't even need me. You know, you don't need somebody to tell you these things. There's a connection between the foods we eat and how we process them, our digestive processing, and the, the manifestation of these diseases. This is what your doctor should be doing. This is what doctors should be doing. You should be connecting these things up. Folks, you cannot eat the foods we eat. You cannot suffer and deal with digestive issues and say, well, everybody has it or I'm just going to deal with them or they're not that big a deal and not expect it to compound. Now, Pat, the good news is your husband is only 43. You can turn this thing right around, around quickly. You can turn around today. Number one, start to isolate the foods that are causing the digestive problems. That's the most important thing you could do. Dairy and grains are two, uh, two great places to start, but it could be anything. So right. get a little notebook, jot them down. Every time he has cramps, bowel movement problems, whatever, heartburn, nausea, whatever it is, write it down in a book. What did I eat an hour, two hours, three, four, five hours before? Keep a running total. He's going to be shocked at what he finds out. Those are foods that he needs to eliminate. Next, he needs to start taking in uh, uh, support for the digestive system, probiotics, uh, as much uh, nightly essence is great, 80 billion units a day, multiple strains of bacteria. Then he wants to make sure that he's getting uh, uh, things that coat and soothe the digestive tract. Bone soup will coat and soothe the digestive tract. The Z radical from longevity will coat and soothe the digestive tract. Aloe coats and soothes the, di the digestive tract. The glucosamine capsules can help. Uh, noni juice can help. All of these have a coating and soothing property for the digestive tract and will help improve digestive symptomology. Now, here's the link to cancer and tumors and growth, cells that are dividing out of control. Cells divide out of control because of uh, defects that are occurring on the outside part of the cell. It's called the cell membrane. The cell membrane is fatty. And it's very responsive to fatty nutrients, especially vitamins A and D. We'll be talking about this in the coming days, how the importance of vitamin D for cancer and for growth and what's called differentiation. We've talked about that in the past. So he's probably got some issues with fat malabsorption or, and or, it could be both, fat malabsorption and a, a deficiency in the intake of fatty nutrients. So what he wants to do is he wants to start focusing on fat absorption and taking in fatty nutrients with the fat absorption. That means uh, using lipase and the ultimate enzymes from longevity, using lecithin, you could get that uh, at a health food store, use lecithin granules, finish all his meals up with the ultimate enzymes and apple cider vinegar. It wouldn't hurt him to get a little choline and it wouldn't hurt him to get some extra bile sauce and some extra pancreatin all with meals or after meals. And this can all help with fat absorption. And at the end of his meals, have him take 20,000 international units of vitamin A, 400 international units of vitamin E. Uh, vitamin D, probably best if he can get some sun. If he can't get some sun, then 5,000 IU of vitamin D3. The sun's the best way, however, and I'll tell you about that tomorrow, why that's so important. And then uh, uh, 5,000 micrograms of vitamin K2. Now, specifically for the nerves and for the inflammation, vitamin B, the B complex, which you'll get in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, can be very helpful, and the electrolytes, potassium, calcium, magnesium. Uh, these are all very important for helping uh, control how nerves fire, and that may have some uh, benefits for the, uh, for the nerve pain. You'll get all of that in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. I will guarantee you, Pat, I'd love it if you stay in touch with me. I will guarantee you that if he starts today, he can notice a difference within 24 hours, especially around the food. If you want some really quick results, Pat, have him fast for one day. Have him fast for 24 hours and watch what happens, okay? Will you stay in touch with me, Pat? I sure will. Okay, yeah, go. He's on the healthy start pack. I just wondered what else we needed to fats, do. Fats, fat absorption, correct digestive issues. Okay, great. And, and those fatty nutrients, the DEA and K that we talked about. And don't forget the essential fatty acids either. You may want to double or triple the ZFAs. But, you know, if he's not absorbing, which it sounds like he may have an absorption problem, he may not be getting the benefit of the EFAs. So make sure he takes his EFAs with all of those fat absorption aids that I just talked about, the digestive enzymes, the apple cider vinegar, the pancreatin, et cetera. Okay? 
Okay, thank you so much. Okay, God bless, Pat. Good luck. All right, let's see uh, if we can squeeze one more in here. Nancy, what's going on? Nancy in Texas, welcome to the Bright Side. Hi. Um, we talked on Monday, and um, but today you said something about muscle weakness, and I uh, heard you say fibromyalgia, and I was diagnosed with that. Yeah, I sure. Have, I fibromyalgia, have. Is, fibromyalgia is a general kind of term for pain, basically. Fibromyalgia. Yeah pain in the muscles and there's a million things that could cause it it's just generalized it's a generalized symptom the most likely suspect and i hate to be beating a dead horse here is toxins that are getting into the body through the digestive system or imbalances in the bacteria in your digestive tract and once again nance like i was talking with uh, our last callers Mm -hmm. history of digestive issues right yes or no I'm taking notes, yes. Okay, okay. So I'm saying. So My mind doesn't work real fast, though. So. I know. My mouth sometimes goes a little bit too fast. I try, to, <laughs> I try to slow down a little bit, but there's just so much to talk about here. Anyway, fibromyalgia is just generalized pain, and no doctor with half a brain should ever say to anybody, you have fibromyalgia and bill them for it, because it's like saying you have pain in your muscles. Now, here's give me $100 for telling you that. You don't need anybody to tell you that. <laughs> You don't need anybody to tell you. You know that. Yeah. So, so number one, probiotics and anything you could do to support the digestive system. This is for all fibromyalgia. Probiotics, good bacteria, the nightly essence from longevity is my favorite. 80 billion units a day, uh, multiple strains of bacteria. If you're not going to use the nightly essence, get one that has multiple strains of bacteria. That is 10 or 12 different types of bacteria. Okay. Digestive enzymes after all meals. Magnesium tends to be very helpful for folks who have muscle weakness, or uh, I'm sorry, fibromyalgia problems. Uh, there's a couple of reasons oh. for that. What, what was that? Magnesium. Magnesium, you get, right? That's right. You can get on the Osteomag from longevity, or you can get on... Uh, uh, well, the Osteomag is a great product. There's also, uh, uh, the, uh, they call it the OsteoFX. I think they changed the name of it. That's got a little magnesium in there as well. Uh, there's a special kind of magnesium that seems to work nicely for fibromyalgia called magnesium malate. And that's spelled M-A-L-E-A-T, I believe. Maliate, I think it is. And that's got something in it called malic acid along with the magnesium. Malic acid is very, very interesting. Uh, malic acid, citric acid, tartaric acid. These are all lactic acid. These are all considered alpha hydroxy acids and they have ability to help detoxify the body. There's some real interesting uh, literature associated with lactates and citrates and these kinds of compounds for helping detoxify uh, poisons that can build up in the muscles. Um, So you may want to consider magnesium malate uh, as that's more of a treatment which I don't really recommend especially if you've got underlying difficulties. I talked, the reason I brought it up earlier and this is what you heard is I was talking about vitamin D and how vitamin D deficiency can cause these generalized pain symptoms, bone, yeah. bone, bone pain, joint pain, muscle pain. Vitamin D deficiency can occur when you're dealing with digestive health issues. So this is where it all ties together. You can take vitamin D or you can get vitamin D from the sun, but uh, you really want to make sure that you're correcting digestive issues, especially in the gut with bacteria. Uh, bacteria, when they're out of balance, can start to pr- produce toxins that can accumulate in the muscles. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I'm so sorry, folks, if we left you on hold. We'll be back tomorrow and we'll talk about how you get vitamin D from the sun, what it exactly occurs, uh, and why you want to make sure that you're getting your vitamin D from the sun as opposed to getting your vitamin D from food or from supplements. We'll do that tomorrow as we continue talking about bone building, health, and nutrition on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Take care, everybody. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.